Well, hello there, and welcome to this video, which is all about how to make fabulous icons for your apps free of charge, don't you know? Fabulous icons like this. Or maybe you'd like something that looks a little bit like this. Or maybe something a little bit more conservative, like this. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this type of thing absolutely free of charge. Now, I am making this video with the expectation that people who are going to be uploading to the Trongate module market might find this useful. However, even if you're not a Trongate user, maybe you're into mobile apps, maybe you're into Chrome extensions, and you need an icon for the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store or something. Well, if you're in that category, I'm sure you'll find this video useful anyway. You may have to modify sizes and things, but hopefully this will at least give you a few ideas. So, shall we dance? Okay. Okay, now to get started, I'm going to recommend this fabulous site here, which is called Icon Pro. It's at iconpro.io. As far as I can tell, this is free. And I have to give thanks to my friend Gavin, who joins us at the live stream sometimes. He discovered this. And I think it's an excellent site. I was able to create an account in minutes. There was nothing intrusive, nothing uncool. And as soon as I created an account, I was able to just log in. And when you do that, you're going to see a button that says create icons now. So let's click on that. And the very first thing that I'm going to recommend doing is go to this size thing here and change it to 450. Okay. The next thing I want to do is have a look at these icons. Now we have some little navigation buttons. Do you see how I'm navigating left and right? Okay. And have a look. Find something that makes you feel kind of good. Now you've got a search bar upstairs, of course. By all means, use that. There are hundreds of... Now, they're not really icons. They're pictures for within icons. But there's hundreds to choose from, oh hallelujah. So have a look around, find one that makes you feel good. I'm gonna go with this little padlock here. So I'll just click on it. And already, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. It's given us a nice icon. It's square, it has rounded corners, kind of a purple background. It's not too bad, but you don't need to stick with that. You can have all sorts of shapes and colors and everything. And the best way to check all of the different shapes and sizes out is to click on backgrounds. Here it is up here. And you can see we've got a whole bunch of different backgrounds. So for example, here's a circle. Here's um, a kind of shield thing here. Here's a hexagon. We've even got a triangle. Here's something here. It's quite fancy. And we do have other pages. Here's one. Looks a bit like a speech bubble. Now, do you see how the picture here is a bit low down? Doesn't quite work with this. Well, you can left click once. You have a little pop up here. And you'll see that we can change the size of the icon. Not the icon, the picture within the icon. See, I'm making it smaller, bigger, anything you want. And we've even got these little arrow keys so I can move it up like that. I can move down, left, right, anything you want until you're happy. And then just click off of the thing. Now, let me choose a shape here. I think I'll go with, um, let's have a look here. Oh, decisions, decisions. Well, let me try this one here, okay? Now I can see straight away that my little padlock has to move down, so I'll click and I'm just going to nudge down by clicking this arrow key down here. There we go. Maybe nudge, well maybe we'll have it about here. I think I'll make it a bit bigger. That's okay, yep, yeah. I'll maybe move up a bit. And there we go. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that, so I'll click off of that. Now, let's imagine you want to change the color. So, 
some of the icons have got a solid colour. You should be able to figure that out quite easily. In the case of this icon though, we have a gradient going on. And you can see that there's this gradient bar up here. So all you have to do is click on the left side of the gradient bar, the left side. Then you've got a little colour slider here. So I'm going to choose maybe a really dark green colour. Well, not totally dark, maybe about, say, here. Okay, I'm happy with that, so I'll click off. Then I'm going to go to the right-hand side of this colour gradient here. I'm going to click. I'm going to go back over to the green territory. But now I'm going to have a dark green. Okay, so now it's going to be a really dark green. Something like that. Okay, here we go. Now, it doesn't look entirely the way that I would have hoped. I want it to look kind of like as if the light's coming from above. And there's a little wheel here that you can click on. And when you do that, you can actually rotate this. And watch how it changes that gradient. Do you see that? Changes the whole vibe. Now, you can type in numbers or else you can just rotate like me. Yeah, I think that's just about working there. Okay, so I'm at 209 degrees. Now, you might be something different. You don't have to copy me. I think it's a wee bit too dark. So I'm just going to click and just brighten it a wee tiny bit. There we go. Click off. Perfect. So that's my icon. I feel quite good about it. Now, I'm going to download the icon. So I'm going to click download. We have a few options. Believe it or not, the best option is PDF. I sat up last night and went through all of these. The JPEG is okay, but it gives you a white background, so it's not much use. The icon is tiny. I mean, it's about 16 pixels or something. It's useless. SVG is pretty good, but you lose those nice color gradients. So unfortunately, it doesn't really give you what you hope for. The best is PDF. So we're going to click on PDF. And I'm going to download to the desktop. There we go. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is take you to another website. This is one that I use almost every day. It's called Photopia. It's at photopia.com. It's kind of like an online Photoshop. It's free of charge. Now, I'm going to open from computer and I'm going to open this PDF that we've now downloaded. Here it is here. So we can see our icon. Unfortunately, it's all kind of a weird shape and there's a lot of strange stuff going on with this. So I'm going to go to Layer, Flatten Image, and then I'm going to choose this, uh, the magic wand. Here it is here, this little magic wand tool. Now, this is the most tricky part of the whole process because we're going to click in this white area it looks like I've actually been quite lucky. But the key is that there's a tolerance value up here. Now, I've got mine on 70. The higher you go, the more aggressive the select is. And if you have it too low, let's say 1, and then I click. Do you see how it's just too weak it's the, or too sensitive, I should say? So you're going to have to adjust this tolerance. And... I've found that the tolerance that is best, well, it depends on the shape of the image and the colour and all of that. So you're going to have to play around with that and find one that works for you. I've got this on a tolerance of 70 and I think it's pretty good. So I'm going to go with that, okay? So I have now got the magic wand selected. But beware, because what we've actually selected is everything outside of the icon. To flip that around, I'm going to go to Select, then Inverse. And now it's selecting the icon. I'm going to do Command-C, obviously Control-C for Windows and Linux people. I'm going to go File, New. Now there's two things to watch out for. When you're doing the new file, make sure your width and height are the same. So I'm seeing 794, I'm going to make the height 794. You may have a different number, just make sure they're the same. Then I'm going to make sure that the background is transparent. 
There we go. Then I'm going to click Create. And there we are. So now I'm going to do Command V. Obviously that's Control V for Windows and Linux people. I'll click Allow. It's accessing the clipboard. There we go. Now unfortunately it's not quite in the right place, but that's okay. On the top left I'm going to grab this little arrow thing. This is called the Move tool. And I'm going to click and drag. There we go. Now, if you want to really test that you've done this properly, you can see that we've got two layers here. We've got a background and then the part with the actual icon. In the case of the Trongate module market, the background is really dark. It's almost black. So I'm going to go to background and I'm going to go to this little gradient thing. Do you see the arrow here? If I zoom you right in, right here, well, if we click around there, we can choose Paint Bucket Tool. And as long as we've got a dark color down here, well, with our Paint Bucket Tool, we can now click on the background. And there we go. Now, it's not perfect. It's a little bit ragged around the edges, but it's pretty good. And by the time we've shrunk that down, I think it's going to be just about perfect. So that's me just testing, making sure that there's no big ugly white edges or anything like that. And I'm feeling kind of good. So now I'm going to click this little eyeball. So that gets rid of the background. Then we're going to cut out our image. And we're going to do that using the crop tool. So here's the crop tool here. Crop tool. And we're going to go to this size area. Now, in the case of the Tron Gate module market, it's a certain size that we want. In fact, let me just show you. The size of icon for the Tron Gate module market is 256 by 256. That's what we are going to go for here. So I'm going into Photopia. We're on the crop tool. And for the size, I'm going to say fixed fixed size even with a width of 256 and a height of 256 going to click and you can see if you look really closely that we've got a little square here so now I'm going to grab the corners and just extend this thing out maybe do the same down here so that we are selecting our icon now it doesn't really matter if the area that you select is a little bit bigger than the icon. And you can see that that's what's happened here, especially on the, as far as the height goes. It's a wee bit bigger, but that's okay. The main thing is you don't want to cut into the icon. That would not be good. So, with our thing now selected, with the crop tool, I'm going to press return. And there is the icon. Now if you want to really make sure you've done this right, you can go to image, image size, and you'll see that it says 256 by 256. So that's perfect. So now I'm just going to go to file, export as PNG, and give the icon a name. I'm going to recommend avoiding spaces and avoiding any difficult or problematic characters like apostrophes. So I'm going to just call this cool underscore icon dot png. I'll have the quality at 100. That's fine. I'm going to hit save. And I'll just save it to the desktop. All right. So now if I go to the Trongate site, when I'm now uploading a module, and when we come to the upload icon section, I can say, cool, let's do this. And I can select the icon. Here it is, and I'm just going to click Upload, and there's our icon, and then I can just click Continue. And one of the really cool things about the Trongate module market is that you can preview the item even if you haven't published it yet, even if you haven't uploaded everything. You can click Preview in Store, and there you go. Pretty, pretty cool. So, that's how you make nice icons. If you found this video useful, 
I would be really grateful if you could give this one a thumbs up. It really, really helps. By the way, if you happen to be someone who likes using the Trongate framework, then please do give us a star on GitHub. We are on a mission here to make PHP great again and to keep the doors of web development open. We need your help, so join us and please do give Trongate a star on GitHub if you haven't done so already. Thanks for being here. Have a great day. I'll see you later.